Hey my loves, welcome back to another video. In today's video, I want to share with you how you can organize your laundry room. In last week's video, I gave you an overview of the renovation we have done. Since then, I have added a few more touches. Overall, I have created an easy to clean space by tiling the walls. Cleaning is now just a wipe and this quartz counters are so easy to wipe and keep spot free and shiny. I did mention that I didn't tile all the way to the top because I wanted to add some wall art. I ordered this decal and it turned out to be just the right size. This is my favorite laundry label slash coat if you want to call it and I'm really glad to have it in my new room. I have aligned it to the sink so even if the cabinet door is open you can still see it. On this side my son has added this small drying rack. It's stainless steel and will therefore not rust and it matches the faucet perfectly. And I have also added a laundry guide. My old one was in blue, so this one matches better. The frame is the same old one, but the print is on canvas, making it look just that little bit more crisp. And it provides reference to washing, temperature, drying, ironing and treating symbols. It's also a great addition to have a washing sink in this area. Again, it's anything that you can do to make this chore easier and faster. I find it so convenient to soak my kitchen towels here overnight and then wash them in the morning and hang them to dry all in one single space. It's such a time saver. I was definitely on the right thought process when I decided it's important to have a bright space. We had a dark, dingy space, which was such a drag. Of course, the best light is natural light. So if you're blessed with windows, then open those as often as possible to let in fresh air and sunlight. But if you are like me and there are no windows, use bright lighting. This can really help lift your spirit and motivate you into doing laundry. Like all spaces, it's important to find ways to maximize the space. Most homes have a tiny or at least a very small laundry area. One of the most basic ways to maximize your space is to stack the washer and dryer vertically. When we renovated, my initial plan was side by side, but that would have limited my easy access storage in this area, so I reverted back to stacking them. When stacking your appliances, securing the dryer is very important because the vibration does cause it to move slightly. So you can secure it either to the wall or you can get this sort of a stacking tray. This way, the appliances are very secure and you also have this pull-out shelf, which works great as a sorting area. To further maximize my vertical space, I also store clothes that need to be ironed in a hamper on the top of the dryer. It sort of keeps it out of my way until I'm ready to tackle the ironing on laundry day or when my ironing lady is here. Another way to maximize space is to add hanging or overhead cabinets. This will give you extra room for storing extra stuff. I think you can probably already tell how excited I am with this space. I'm starting from scratch with a completely new area, but even then, to truly organize a room, you sometimes need to be ruthless. Get it all out and go through everything you have. Trash all the empty bottles. If you need them as reference to rebuy, then take a pick and recycle the empty bottles. Is there something you bought and don't use? Donate it. Just don't clutter up your organized space. Organization does not need to be expensive. It doesn't have to mean buying lots of organizers. Shop your home first. One tip is if you buy organizers, then buy them all in the same color or style. This way you can switch them around and use them in different parts of your home. You can repurpose them when you want a refresh or you are updating your systems. I personally either buy white or clear. All the organizers here are previously used and you might have seen them in other parts of my home. Store everything you have pared down systematically. Assess it by frequency of access and of course by weight. Distribute the items evenly and in categories so reaching for items becomes less tedious. Mm -hmm. 
Put yourself in the centre of this workstation and first find the easiest access spot. This is where you need to put all the items you reach for regularly. Usually these will be your tools. In this room, that means the soap. I found these pouring canisters which I feel create a neat and tidy look. I really do like the clean design. There are handles for easy lifting. And since these are 1 litre or 1000 millilitres each, they can contain quite a bit. But they are also lighter and easier for me to manage than the economy sized bottles. And the caps have the measurements so you can add the right amount of liquid. If you noticed, I have organized the soaps by the order of usage. This way, should anyone else need to do the laundry, they will better understand your system. Once you have organized your absolute essentials, then you can store the remaining items in surrounding areas. The overstock and refills can be placed in a less central area as you won't be reaching for those every day. Have a set refill day, maybe once a week, to get this box down and refill for the week. I have all my ironing aids on this shelf, such as wrinkle remover and ironing starch. We also have a fabric spray, which if in a rush, we just spray it on the garment and put it in the dryer for three to four minutes. It decreases the garment and it is ready to wear. Plus, it smells great. Next are those items which you do not use daily. There will be those items that you do use, maybe not daily, but often enough, and those need to be stored within at least a stretch. For me, it is these items here. The extra iron and the steamer, as well as a sewing kit for mending and darning. They are near enough for us to reach for, and others in the family also know where they are because everything is organized within the designated space. The lower portion of the cabinet is reserved for storage of non-soap items. The shallow pails at the far end are those that we do not reach for too often. I do use these, but not so frequently, so I have pushed them into the corner. I have these storage baskets with lids here that hold quite a mix of items actually. Kitchen towels that have been washed. Now these are used cloths that I store here while I keep the new ones under the dry kitchen sink. Now here's my simple rule. If something is going to stay in its spot for at least 24 hours, then I fold and store it neatly. But if it's going to get used as soon as I'm done folding, then I refuse to fold. I just corral them into one bin and use as I go. Here I have a box that I don't need too often either. In fact, the less I need to reach for it, the better. It is these old towels that we use in case we have a spill or a dripping aircon or something equally unappealing. And this one contains the clothes that need to be hand washed. Since I only wash those on laundry day once a week, I need a spot to collect those. Another item I have here, which is a great tool, but it is also very bulky, is my iron. I've had this for many years. And I will definitely buy another one of the same when the time comes, probably not too far in the future. This one leaves scuff marks on the shelves. So to avoid that, I just got an old tray that matches the size and I keep the iron in it. It's easy to slide in and out and it keeps the shelf scuff free. It's actually a totally inexpensive DIY hack for your homemade pull out. Not having more than necessary, and keeping only items related to laundry will also make keeping this space tidy a breeze. Take for example under the sink. I have a lot of room here, but that doesn't mean I need to pack it with things that don't belong. I have one basket for unwashed laundry. Since I do one load a day, I don't usually have much of a pile here. This basket is also used to collect the laundry from the bedrooms every morning. On this side, I have this basket with mostly bleach. I have bleach for whites and bleach for colors. My favorite fabric softener, which my daughter also uses for her office clothes, is stored here as well. Behind, on a riser for easy reach, I have this huge bottle of detergent. I have put the liquid in the pouring canister as I showed you, so I don't have to manage this 3.6 kilo bottle 
regularly. I use this to soak my son's work clothes. Basically, two of my mini adults are now in the construction industry. So there are times their clothes, especially my son's, he often comes home covered in cement and paint splashes. And those need a little bit of extra treatment. I will tell you more about this in my laundry day video coming soon. And then I have the mopping solution in a larger pouring canister, which makes it so easy to measure and pour. And my stock is stored right next to my essentials. So much easier to keep track of. And under the riser is just the decalcifier for the iron. No matter how hard you try to pare things down to the minimum, there are still possibly some other small items that you do need to store. Using just these IKEA boxes, I have organized the color catcher sheets in this one. These color catchers are great to help maintain the brightness of color, while these are awesome to refresh blacks and dark clothes. And my extra scrubbing brushes are here in another box. Then I just have some kitchen towels over here. Always keep the countertops uncluttered. Uncluttered spaces are firstly more welcoming and you instinctively tend to keep it that way. They are not wrong when they say clutter attracts clutter, so keep your counters organized. I have limited myself to one powdered detergent here for soiled clothes. And then on this tray, which is from Grow, I have delicate clothing wash and a hand soap here. Now this is hand soap for washing our hands, not to be confused with hand wash, which is for washing clothes by hand. I have also limited myself to less decor, just one plant and one pot of flowers. All this empty space serves as a worktop, allowing me not just to fold and pile the clothes, but I can also use the space to do some quick ironing using this countertop ironing pad. This way, I don't have to pull out the ironing board to do a single piece of ironing. These designing and organizing elements were my focus for this laundry room, and I can tell you that it is becoming super functional and it is an inviting space too. Just a reminder here is to keep your laundry room well stocked. Laundry isn't most people's favorite chore. So don't give yourself an excuse not to do laundry. Have your needs on hand. Have some extras even, so you can get your laundry done quickly and out of the way. And as an added bonus, organization can also help you save money. When you can clearly see what you have before you head to the store, you're less likely to buy products you don't need. I use my home management planner to keep up with my laundry and keeping my laundry room clean. To get your copy, you can use the link in the description box below. Another tip here is having everything labelled. This way, if you are not up to doing laundry or you have delegated it to other members of your family, they will have no problem following your system. I hope you have found this video useful and are able to take some tips back with you into creating a more functional and inviting laundry room for your home. In another video in a few weeks, I'll also show you how I manage my laundry routine. So do subscribe and hit that bell to get notification of upcoming videos. And until the next video, this is Ravina saying happy homemaking.